Welcome to The Edge. I'm Callie O'Donnell. Up first on latest On The Edge, Saratoga Springs football. The Blue Streaks last won a Super Bowl title in 2009. It's glory that as of last October, they were nowhere close to reclaiming. Toga was blown out by LaSalle in the opening round last year of sectionals, but 11 months later, they're the 13th ranked team in the state. With Friday night surprisingly easy win over defending Super Bowl champion Chenandoa, the Blue Streaks improved to 4-0 and on the season. They sit number one in the stacked Empire Division. And what's more, they have won every game this season by at least four touchdowns. Toga's high-octane offense has a lot to do with it. Tail back to Dakota Harvey has seven touchdowns to lead an offense that scored at least 40 points in every game this year. Harvey's stats may be the most impressive, but he's hardly alone in the Blue Streaks backfield. It's real good for any team if you have a lot to choose from. Just, just like a hand in a cookie jar. I mean, just do what you can with what you have, and we just have a lot of talent that we can work with. So, it just feels good, and it makes it a lot easier for everyone to do that. The thing that that I like about this group is is they're not selfish. You know, not one of them has said, "Coach, I need the ball more." Um, you know, they know they're going to get their opportunities, and when they get them, they need to make the, the, the most of them because, uh, you know, the ball's going to be spread around. And this Friday night, Saratoga will attempt to run its record to 5-0 and when they play at Bob Ford Field against winless Albany High. Now, Jason Lewis was at Saratoga practice this afternoon, and Jason, even though Albany doesn't have a win yet this season, there is a very specific reason why the Blue Streaks are not overlooking the Falcons. That's right, Kelly. You're absolutely right. The last time Albany actually won a double-A game was back in 2007, and the victim, Saratoga Springs. The Blue Streaks obviously not planning for history to repeat itself, but they use that as some extra motivation. In other words, they're treating this week of practice like any other. You can never overlook an opponent, especially one with nothing to lose like Albany. Those are the teams that are the most dangerous. The capability of Albany beating Saratoga is there, and, and that's what we, you know, we had to let them know. Like we tell them, there's movies made about it, you know, any given Sunday. Well, in this case, it's any given Friday, and uh, we need to go out and we need to play well. I looked at their film and they look like they're a much better team than they were last year and they move the ball better, th uh, ball better, throw the ball better and we just can't underestimate them. And you mentioned that weapon before Dakota Harvey, but yep. you also can't forget about Nick Kondo. He's got six touchdowns so far and he actually missed last season because of a shoulder injury from baseball. And Brian Williams is in his second year under center. He has 13 total touchdowns, touchdowns seven throwing. So, yep. you know, when you look at the overall picture, they have a lot of weapons over there. A lot of weapons they didn't have this time last year, which is exactly. maybe why people didn't see Saratoga coming. Exactly, and that's a big thing. And one of their weapons, actually their leading wide receiver from a year ago, Luke Tom Thompson, hurt his hamstring in the first game. He's been out this entire time. So they're expecting him to come back in the next few weeks. I know today, this week was a target, but uh, Coach Jones said he's probably not going to play this week. He's not, they don't want to rush him pretty much. But when he comes back, that's just another weapon added to the mix. They kind of have their so-called triplets in there. That's right. So it'll be interesting Saratoga's to see. Saratoga's a force. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, Jason. Well